very excited for this next presentation from Roxanne Gibert. She has been doing analytics, metrics, and business analysis for some of the earliest and bestest companies in social gaming, including Play First, Zynga, Playdom, and her own ventures. You would be hard pressed to find somebody who knows more about product management in social gaming. Now she serves as the product manager of user acquisition for DNA. Please give a big, big welcome to Roxanne Gibert. All right, thank you for that nice intro, Scott. Um, so currently I'm at DNA working on their Mobagi platform, specifically on user acquisition features, which focuses on cross-promo, re-engagement, and viral features. However, my experience has primarily been as a game producer, game product manager, and at one point um, as a startup founder as well of a game, mobile game studio. So what I wanted to focus on was one of the uh, core elements of, of game design, which is how to use, or at least freemium game design, how to use analytics to drive different behaviors, specifically those behaviors which result in monetization. So what I decided to put together was not so much use cases, but best practices on how to use A-B testing, funnel analysis, and then kind of what is the framework of, of mind that you might want to take into your analysis so that you can really hone in and target specific metrics to increase your overall gross revenues. So starting off with the framework of analysis, there are a lot of key metrics that contribute to your user's lifetime value. Depending on which platform you're working on, you're going to be looking at different metrics. If you're a Facebook developer, you're going to probably be looking at your virality a little bit closer than if you're a mobile developer, unless you're working with some you know, great platforms like Mobagi to kind of drive some additional viral or cross-promo behavior. So the framework for analysis that I use when I go into any game is taking a look at what is the metric that is suffering the most right now that is contributing um, or that can contribute the most to my gross revenues. So you, you have obviously starting off from the user acquisition side, your CPIs, your CPEs, and then you're taking a look at your conversion to monetization of all your users that came in this month that day what percent of those converted into paying users, and then looking at what the average revenue per paying user is, as well as what your overall retention is, contributes to your LTV. If you get to a point where your user acquisition cost is less than your overall LTV, then you're ready to scale. And I did want to touch a quick note on what Aaron mentioned about non-incent versus incent. I think incent is a great source of traffic to use if you want to do some analysis on how your users are performing without paying too much money. Once you get to that point where you really have a good understanding of how your users are performing, that's when you can really start getting into your, uh, or, you know, non-incent is a good tr data that you can grab after that move into your incent once you feel a little more comfortable with how your traffic is performing. Um, so. One of the things that I like to do before um, looking at any game's performance is do a little bit of benchmarking. This can happen internally, this can happen within the industry, look at your uh, available public sources. This will give you an idea of what your performance should be looking like from a successful perspective. For instance, your average time on site for a mobile game is going to vary from the average time on site from a Facebook game. Um, conversion to paying even changes depending on which devices you use. Um, and even redemption can, can change on uh, things, for instance, like push notifications, depending on which, uh, you know, if you're going Android or iOS. So once you have a framework of what your metrics should look like, then you have a couple of levers that you can use to analyze and to push those metrics um, into a higher performing LTV. So starting off with user acquisition, you can test and look at your LTV by source. Uh, I've seen it happen before where a game has an ARP DAO of six cents with one source, move to another source that can immediately jump up to over 30 cents. So looking at your LTV by source and, and really monitoring how your users perform, not just at the point that they convert into an install, but like Aaron mentioned earlier, how they perform over their overall life cycle and, and their overall lifetime. On the monetization side, there are several things that people like to test, you know, the price of their virtual goods, um, what the exchange rates look like. I, I like to really look at conversion points, which means at the point that a user enters your game, 
when is the first time that they, that they become a buying user and what's really driving that behavior? Um, and on the engagement side, how are people progressing through their, their game? Uh, the new user flow is more than just the tutorial. It's looking at how are they completing certain quest lines? How are they engaging with certain features that you put out there that contribute to their ability to you know, ultimately pass through all of the different content that you're putting out for them? Um, level progression and taking a look at how are your users today progressing across all, across all of the levels that you've put out for them. Um, you're going to be putting in level gates, I, I assume, which is a point where you say, hey, user, um, if you want more free content, you're either going to have to pay or maybe invite some friends or perform some sort of viral or monetization action. So taking a look at where you put those gates and how you let people engage with your free content uh, is something that you really want to be optimizing. Um, and then event completion, which is more than, again, just uh, your tutorial. This could be anything from you know, putting in some sort of delayed, uh, delayed achievement uh, event, which says, hey, you know, users, which MMOs tend to do this kind of thing, all of you who complete this quest will get this reward you know, in the next seven days. So taking a look at how people are engaging with your different events and promotions. So this is just one framework of what are a couple of different levers that we can kind of push to overall grow our LTV. And when you come into your game, you're going to want to immediately look at which metric is suffering the most. Is it the retention? Is it that my particular user acquisition source isn't performing so well? Um, you know, is it incent or non-incent? Is my CPE campaign even relevant? Um, does getting a person past level three really mean that they're going to engage with their game? Or maybe getting to level three and you're paying a CPA on like a level three event trigger, maybe that's not really going to get you anywhere in terms of you know, increased retention. And I'll answer any questions in terms of terminology after if you guys would like as well. So I wanted to give you one sample chart that I really like to look at and it's level distribution. So looking at all of your new users who come in in a given day, these guys have installed in the last 24 hours, how are they progressing to your chart through your content? This is one way of, of doing, you know, you could do a funnel analysis for this as well, but if you really saw an immediate drop here in that like first and second category, which a lot of games do actually tend to look like this because churn tends to be really high in the first day, um, what are some of the things that you can do to kind of bring your players along and keep engaging them? Are, are you explaining the, uh, the core gameplay mechanic in a very simple way that they understand? And are you really properly targeting the genre that you're going after? If you're going after an MMO, you have a little bit more of a flexibility to explain your, your core mechanics. If you're building a casual game, you really want to keep it short, especially if you're working on a mobile game. You probably have one to two minutes to really engage your user. And by that one to two minute time, do they really understand what the purpose of their game is? Um, getting players to retain is obviously uh, a matter of having a really great, fun, engaging game, but how you're able to actually explain to them the gameplay is really a matter of understanding and optimizing how you're marketing your game within it through your different tutorials or new user flows. So here's another example of um, looking at level progression, and this is looking at your total DAU. Um, distributed by both your existing users and your new users. None of this data is actually real, by the way, so um, just a note on that. Um, so this is, this, is a, this is a way that you can see, okay, you know, my one-day users, my two-day users, you can begin to cohort them, and you can actually begin to A-B test uh, new user flows, which explain the game in tutorials in different ways to players and see, you know, if you're able to actually get the players past a certain point of engagement, how much more likely are they to stay in the game? Okay, so on the A-B testing side, um, most, most people I think like to engage with A-B testing um, on the virtual goods side. Uh, I've seen that quite a bit. You know, you put out your different catalog of items and you can take a look at if I offer players this item for $5 and you know, this cohort for $10, um, what is my overall gross revenue? And actually, I definitely recommend that if you have a freemium game, you should always be A-B testing your virtual goods because very interestingly enough, I've seen it time and time again where changing that price um, can really fluctuate either the number of users that purchase it, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you've hit that sweet spot of where your overall gross revenue is going to come from. So if, if I'm making sense here, for instance, let's say you have an item 
that uh, is worth $10, right? And then you hike up that item price to $20, right? So you run an A-B test. You might find that you're gonna have maybe more users buying that $10 item um, as an overall, but your gross revenues might end up exceeding with less users buying the $20 item, and that could happen vice versa. So in any case, always be testing your virtual goods as well as your conversion points. At which point are you offering users these items? Are you throwing up an interstitial and targeting and segmenting these users? Um, your leveling curve. So XP payouts is, is definitely something that I would recommend A-B testing. And this is basically uh, one of the drivers to your overall level progression. Um, how much XP are you gonna give? How many actions are you asking players to perform before they kind of get that reward of leveling up? And I'm speaking a little bit more towards um, kind of like social, casual games, even casino games. Um, you know, what is that level progression going to look like and how much are people going to retain if you're giving them, exposing them to more content at first or less content? Do you wanna kind of give them a little bit of a carrot that says, um, you know, on your next session, maybe when you level up the next time, you're going to get access to this amazing piece of content? Or, you know, do you wanna give that to them early on? It really depends on your game. And I definitely recommend that you at least test out how quickly people are moving through this. Um, uh, which, which kind of goes into the level gates. At which points are you kind of creating these stopping points? So, so using an example of like another public, uh, you know, a very well-known game like Candy Crush, right? They have very clear level and viral gates. You hit a certain point and you either have to pay 99 cents or you request three tickets. This is what a level gate is or a viral gate, right? So, so if I were, you know, a producer on Candy Crush, I would take a look at how long does it take people to get to that first gate? and how quickly can I push them through that gate? Um, you know, so DNA has a couple of CCG games like Transformers, um, Rage of Bahamut, Marvel, and so every game is going to have a different concept of what leveling up looks like, but for your particular game, what you wanna take a look at is how do you get people engaged with the content? How do you push them along their life cycle further along the way? Get them to that point where they've reached that point in the game where they actually wanna pull out their wallet and pay something to either enhance or speed up their gameplay. Um, exchange rate's pretty basic. If you're working on Android and iOS, one of the interesting things that I've come across recently is the exchange rates, uh, how they're standardized on iOS, but not necessarily on Android. So a one US dollar, even if it's completely you know, converted um, to the currency of another country, might be actually too much still for that particular country. So I would do a little bit of A-B testing if you can on your exchange rates if your game is um, focusing on a lot of different regions. Um, and finally, I think this is the most important thing with A-B testing is monitoring any potential metric cannibalization. So before you go into a test, really take a look at what is the result that I'm looking to see? Um, you know, which specific users am I targeting with this? You don't necessarily want to pick every single user that comes into your game, but maybe you want to run A-B tests that are specifically segmenting users based on specific behavior, such as, let's look at all the users who logged into the game in the last seven days. Or let me look at all of my pain users for the last 30 days and see if I target them specifically with either this promotion or this new feature, how they're going to respond. Um, and overall, how does this affect my LTV? So you can actually run into situations where you introduce uh, new items or you change your game balance in a specific way that actually can ultimately cannibalize your retention even if it increases your gross revenues momentarily. So overall, always be taking a look at what were my metrics before I started this test and what is the, the ending result for my different cohorts compared to the control. Um, so a couple of best practices on A-B testing. Um, the first one is, again, identify your specific target segment. For me working at, at DNA, I work a lot on platform features that are targeting um, certain segments of users that are based on which ones are more likely to you know, return into the game or invite more friends into the platform. This type of segmenting you can do within your own game just by looking at uh, a test that says, let me give you just a simple example. I would like to uh, inspire all of my players who have not paid um, to actually pay the next time they come in. So maybe I'm gonna run an A-B test that says, you know, all users uh, who you know, were active within the last 30 days but have not paid 
Cohort A gets an offer for 50% off of virtual goods. Cohort B gets an offer for 30%. Cohort C gets an offer for 20% and see what that conversion rate looks like, but then also take a look at what your overall retention is and what the overall gross revenues are of one cohort over the other. Um, so, you know, after you've, okay, so this is actually more of an executionary point. I've seen, uh, I've seen people, if I was gonna do a little Roxy hates version, like what Aaron hates, Roxy hates when people run A-B tests and make grand claims about results when they have a cohort of like 50 people. So Roxy hates that, and yet people do that a lot, right? So before you start getting really excited about your performance, make sure that you have enough users in a specific cohort uh, to really validate the results that you're having. And I, and I do understand I have been on the you know, indie startup side where you don't maybe have a lot of users, right, and you're just starting off, but you want to monitor your performance, try to get at least a thousand users if you must, you know, do that. But, you know, as a best practice, I would say try to keep it over 10 to 20,000 users per cohort at minimum so that you can get to at least some relevancy around the performance of these users. So um, let me just kind of skip to this part right here. Here's a sample chart of how I might split up my cohorts if I didn't have a lot of users to work with, right? So in a case where I have, you know, cohort, cohort non here, which is non-paying users, maybe I have 50,000 of these users. I have more of these users, so I could probably split them up into four buckets, meaning uh, 15,000 gets split up into each cohort, and now I can test what my incentives are going to look like across these multiple cohorts. Um, but maybe in my low, mid, high spending user bucket, I have less users, like 20,000. So I'm not going to want to split them up into four different cohorts. I'm probably gonna wanna keep it as a straight A-B test. And then I'm going to want to look at the performance across all of those users. So, you know, target your segment, know exactly who you're going after, Look at what your goal is intended to be. Am I supposed to be increasing my retention? Am I trying to get my new users to return? Um, am I trying to get users who played within the last seven days but then dropped off to return to the game? Whatever the test is that you're running, it's always better if you have a very clear and specific goal in mind, not just when you're creating features, mind you, as, into what, what the performance should be, but also especially when you're doing tests. Um, once you've analyzed the results, definitely iterate. You might have seen something very successful, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to see more success if you just tweak it a little bit. Um, so definitely keep yourself constantly iterating to find those really juice spots um, to, to see what is, what is the best way to, to get users to perform. Um, and then start over. So oh, another, another tip would be try to follow it through the full life cycle of the user if you can. So, uh, this is one great example. I, I recently um, heard a case study about a game that rolled out this feature. 90-day um, LTV completely dropped for like a four to five month period. How did they just A-B tested that feature, which was you know, a pretty core gameplay feature? They probably would have seen the cannibalization that was going to start occurring, and especially with games that are a little bit more complex and have multiple mechanics like um, trading mechanics or open markets or social PVP gameplay. It's really easy to put a feature in that might affect your overall economy. So always be looking at your consumption rates, um, your, you know, your XP payouts, and then how people are actually interacting in the long run before you roll that feature out live. Okay, so funnels. Um, people, when they think of funnels, usually go directly to the tutorial. But I think funnels are a lot more than just looking at your tutorials. Um, taking a look at you know, quest funnels, for instance, if you have a quest line, what are the different steps that people are taking in this quest and what is the completion rate of that look like? At which point are they dropping off, especially if you have a multiple step quest? Um, you know, your new user flow is more than your tutorial, how they're engaging with maybe their first missions or uh, their first couple of levels, if it's like an arcade style game. Um, you'll definitely want to be looking at funnels uh, across multiple levels. Oh, and monetization funnels as well. What are the steps that people are taking from the point that they hit your pay page? Um, you know, where are they clicking out? Or which ones are people clicking on most? Um, so really taking a look at, you know, here are the expected behaviors. When a person enters this feature, I expect them to complete these steps. Where did they not do that and why? And kind of just do that analysis constantly of are people playing the game the way that you intended them to play. Um, and this is just general monetization planning. So, you know, do a quick analysis. 
kind of get your target KPIs based on the genre and the platform that you're developing on. Um, take a look at what your average session time might be. If you're on a mobile game, maybe your first you know, session shouldn't be planned for 30 minutes. Maybe you want to make sure that within five minutes, uh, the person has the full ability to go through the tutorial, engage with the core gameplay mechanic, and really have an understanding of what that game um, gameplay experience is supposed to look like. Um, you know, take a look at uh, competitor economies as well. This I've noticed in casino games. Um, you know, if one casino game gives you enough coins to play for free for like seven days, and you're giving them enough free coins to play for 30 minutes, you know, and it's a very crowded market, um, you know, you might want to just adjust your pay rates based on that. So always be looking at what your competitors are doing and make, making sure that you're giving your user uh, the best gameplay experience that you can for the genre that you're targeting. Um, by source analysis of LTV, again, taking a look at your different sources and how people are performing throughout their life cycle, optimizing your first sessions, um, putting in your gates, and then just making sure that you're constantly driving people to the experience that you want them to see. All right, that's it. Any questions for Roxanne Gibert? Okay, we've got quite a few. Um, do you have an example of kind of how uh, UI and just like visual design have kind of affected A-B testing in any way? Yes. Um, so I've also done um, some A-B testing on UI. And it definitely can affect which feature a person is uh, most likely to engage with at first, which therefore can ultimately affect how they retain or how they monetize based on what you put in front of them or even how you position them. Is it confusing? Is it intuitive? Are you driving them to the experience that you want them to see at first? So definitely A-B test your UI, yeah, if you can. Yeah. Like, have you, like, is, is there like an example of like, you know, time when you like, tried something out and it's worked or not um, So, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a little hard to talk about it, honestly, uh, as far as specific case studies. But what I can say is I've definitely noticed increased engagement on certain features with UI overhauls where maybe in the lobby view of a game, you might change or move around where people access certain things. And this is more on the casino game side, actually, that I'm referring to, yeah. I got a... Um, yeah, by ad network. Oh, can you repeat the question? Sorry. How do you measure network LTV? So not just LTV by game, but in the DNA network. Oh, okay. Um, repeat the question. Oh, okay. So how do you measure LTV by network within the DNA network? Yeah. Um, so. DNA has um, a couple of different ways that, that they're working with developers with their platform. Um, one of the ways that they measure LTV is by taking a look at the consumption rates that users engage in um, through the Mabagi network, and then there's also the in-game currency. So there's no easy answer for that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, I, I was wondering if you ever run into problems on the community side of people seeing through the A-B testing and talking about it with each other? That's a very good question. No, I haven't. Um, although I have noticed, like, on Facebook, for instance, um, I, we have multiple accounts for testing, um, and I've noticed that the UI changes significantly. I haven't seen the case where users um, have complained, although it might happen. You know, I yeah, might, I, have, I might. actually have that. I, I'm the producer on yeah, the, um, a Facebook game, and it's a really strong community, and they'll quickly see through pricing changes on A-B testing? Definitely the pricing changes I've yeah. noticed like on, on Zynga games, like, you know, if, yeah. So I've definitely noticed um, pricing changes, but in terms of the actual backlash or is it a question of, is it worth doing it? I would say, yeah, you might get a very small percent of users who are gonna notice it and might get upset with it. I personally haven't seen a ton of backlash for it, but I'm sure that it exists, yeah. Oh, um, okay, so I, I like to do a lot of internal development of analytics tools, but for A-B testing, 
Um, I'm a huge fan of Lean Plum. I actually tried them out um, recently, and I really love the flexibility that they have with monitoring LTV. Lean Plum, L-E-A-N-P-L-U-M. Um, really great team. Um, and on the analytics side, I would probably say Swerve. Um, I really like the way that they do their retention tables um, and their cohort analysis. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how early do you get involved in game design? Um, at the concept stage. Um, you know, before a game is designed, ideally you're working with your, your business folks uh, to really look at, you know, one, again, market analysis, what are the, what are the targets that you're, that you're looking to hit, which features are going to contribute to that. Um, you know, if you're looking at a, a slate of features and you don't have enough retention or monetization or re-engagement features in there, you're only going to be more successful if you get started early on. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're out of time. Thank you.